Hi, my name is Mario Dusai, and in this video I'm going to talk about passwords. Uh, specifically, I'm going to focus in on how to store and work with passwords inside of an authentication system. Lots of times, uh, terms like encoding, encryption, and hashing are often used synonymously, yet they're actually very different from each other. So to get started, I'll define these terms quickly, then I'll show a few examples of each to demonstrate how they differ, then give a few pros and cons before moving on to just a few examples of how to store these passwords securely. So first, let's define the term encoding. Simply put, it's information converted into a particular form. At first glance, encoded data looks different and looks like it's possibly secure, but it's actually the exact same information just shown in a different language or format, if you will. Uh, think of this in the base numbering systems like base 10, base 64, or even base 2, binary, where the same information is written in each, just in a different format. We'll get back to this in just a minute. Encryption, on the other hand, is a way of securing information. In fact, it's defined as a translation of data into a secure code. Popular examples of encryption methods are DES, Blowfish, and there are many, many others. The benefit of encryption is that with the right information, also known as a key, you can use that secured output to get back to the original input message. In other words, encryption is a two-way method that allows decryption to retrieve the original message. Hashing, on the other hand, um, and in this case to be specific, I'm referring to cryptographic hash functions and not hash tables that you may have seen in a programming or data structures class. Uh, these functions are used to produce a unique and oftentimes fixed length message, also known as a digest, from a string of any length. This is much different from encryption in many ways, uh, but most importantly is that hashing is a one-way function, meaning that the original text should never be recoverable once it's been hashed. SHA-2 and MD5 are a couple of well-known examples of hashing. So now let's take a look at this in action. First, let's encode the word security. Once with the lowercase s and again with an uppercase s. You'll see that the results are almost identical except for the first two characters. Those two characters make up the base 64 representation of the first letter. It's clear that this is just a character by character translation into a different format and the data is not actually secured in any way. With encryption, I'll use a hypothetical DES encryption function to encrypt the word security, all lowercase, using the key of key phrase. And this will produce an encrypted output. Now, if this message were to be sent in an email, uh, it would actually be secured. And if my recipient knows my secret key of key phrase, then this message can be decrypted to retrieve the original text. Hashing, as you'll see, is noticeably different. Using the same example with security uppercase s and security with the lowercase s, the two resulting SHA-512 hash values are completely different from each other. This is one of the characteristics of a good hashing method. A small change in the input equals a noticeable change in the output. Also, the resulting strings are both the exact same length. Finally, these cannot be reverted back to the original value, and in many cases, like authentication with passwords or working with other valuable data like credit card numbers, for example, this is very good and it's actually preferred. Knowing now that encoding is not a method to secure information, let's consider how encryption and hashing benefit a secured system when working with passwords. Encryption, of course, has the benefit of being very secure. However, all of those values are recoverable. Let's say that all of the passwords stored in a database were to be secured using the same method as well as the same key. If that key is ever compromised, all of those passwords that are stored in the database are at risk of being decrypted. This of course has significant impact uh, to the system as well as to the business and their reputation. Hashing, especially when working with passwords, is inherently safer. This is true because uh, the password values can never be returned to their original clear text version. Instead, all of the work done with the hashed passwords is done against the hash itself. At this point, we're getting much closer to having a secured method for storing our passwords. 
However, plain password hashing is still vulnerable to a variety of attacks. So now, we need to employ another technique known as salting, and we'll use the salt value to strengthen our hashes. The term salt can be defined as a unique, random, and often fixed length value which is added to each password hash. To be clear, the salt is randomized for each new password so that the same value is never added to another password. It is important, especially when passwords are the same, that the salt is different. Now, as an example, let's take a look at how LDAP generally stores its salted passwords. In the pseudocode representation below, it would look something like this, where the result is the base64 encoded version of the salt value prepended to the hashed version of the password. And in conclusion, a few final thoughts. It's best to strive to compare the hashed values whenever possible and feasible. Hashing is best done on the server side. While it can be done client side, there are risks associated with that as well. Don't forget to secure your connection between the client and your authentication system. And finally, encoding is not encrypting, and encrypting is not hashing, and hashing is not encoding. These are three different terms which each have different meanings. This was just an overview of a topic that has a lot, a lot of depth. There's of course much more to be said about hashing, authentication, and passwords, but I hope that this was a helpful introduction and explained the differences of each and recommended ways to handle passwords. Thank you very much for watching, and if you like this video, feel free to leave a comment or subscribe to the channel. Thank you.